I would like to thank each one of you for attending our event. My name is Galina Mikhaleva. I'm associate professor in fashion for the Arizona State University. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce the Metaware seminar series on design, technology, and fashion in the age of metaverse, which will explore how technology mediated bodily experience transform human and the fabric of society by bridging the gap between physical, digital, and biological worlds. The seminar series focuses on the idea of metaware, a vision for how technology will become our second skin that can augment human capability and expressivity in the metaverse and beyond. The seminar series will also consider the implications of the technology and philosophy and ethics by bridging together scholars, designers, philosophers, and technologists. The seminar series will explore how emerging technology impacts the design process and the way we experience computing and the body. And now I would like to introduce my team across the university, the country, and also the globe. So Hidren will introduce our first and amazing speaker. So Hidren. Thanks, Galena. Hi, hello, everyone. I'm Hidren. I'm based in Singapore. I'm from the NTU Institute of Science and Technology for Humanity, uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Um, so I'm actually dealing with partnerships and uh, grants at the Institute. And at the same time, um, I'm also pursuing my uh, PhD at the intersection of information science and art history uh, here at NTU. Right. So today we are very, very honored uh, you know, to have uh, in our inaugural session, right, Amani Bikasono. Hopefully I get the right, we got the name right, right. Uh, he is actually a PhD student and business assistant at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, he had received his electrical engineering and information technology from ETH Zurich, as well as his bachelor's uh, at the University of Southampton. He's currently seamlessly embedding electronic devices into soft materials for various applications ranging from variable health, biomechanics, uh, human uh, computer interaction to space exploration. So, He's also very passionate into exploring the creative interplay between science, engineering, art, and design, and the intersection between uh, research and manufacturing. So uh, without further ado, today I would like to you know, pass on the stage to Amani, who will be talking about electronic textiles across skills from manufacturing to applications. So Amani, thank you very much for joining us, and the stage is yours. Thank you, uh, Galina and Hedrin. Um, hey, everyone, I'm Irmandi. I'm currently a PhD student uh, in the Responsive Environments Group at the Media Lab. And here in the Responsive Environments Group, um, we generally develop sensor network materials or systems for applications ranging from sensing the human body, building to environments, to even outer space. Um, and here we leverage uh, novel technologies to create new forms of interactive experience and expressions. And, and I'm gonna cover about textiles because that's my the focus of my research. But in a sponsored environments group in, in the larger group where, where my colleagues, they're working on various um, wearables and uh, environmental sensor networks, you know, from glasses to uh, lunar sensor networks, to space architecture, um, to even um, soft robotics um, and and today I'm basically gonna cover what my research is I'm gonna go oh, uh, pretty quickly hopefully uh, it'll be fine but my research basically is the, this art or, or practice practice of using electronics as raw materials or, or building blocks for making um, smart surfaces, objects, and structures. So I'm looking into fabrication and also into implementations. Uh, of course, with a focus on textiles. Um, and and um, the, the motivation of my research is because of this fast developments uh, in semiconductor materials and fabrication technologies 
because of the Moore's law. Um, we can see the number of devices around us will consciously increase as sensors, electronics become smaller, cheaper, and more integrated into our everyday life. And this is realizing Mark Weiser vision of the computer for the first for the 21st century, which is embedded uh, in you know in the fabric of everyday life. So so back then we have like usually one one computer per household, one computer per person now. We actually you know, have wearables, phone, uh, rings around us. And in the future, we might have hundreds to thousand sensors around, around us um, um, ubiquitously. Going further than Moore's law, there is also advances in other areas, such as 3D packaging, flexible electronics. So we have, we have, we have come a long way from the first commercial Intel 4004 transistor which is in this kind of like breadboard DIP um, um, uh, form factor to, 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 to electronics that can be fabricated on plastic substrates. Uh, this, this one is a recent paper um, that deposited um, oxide transistors in plastic substrates. So, so usually, so not only sensors now, um, researchers have been able to fabricate um, computing devices, microprocessors on plastic substrates. And we've also seen this concept of smart dust, which uh, spearheaded by Chris Pisson in UC Berkeley, this cellular, very miniaturized temperature sensing, sensing nodes um, that can be just like spread around uh, um, uh, a surface. So, so another exciting industry is uh, roll to roll. You know, large area of flexible electronics, known commonly known as microelectronics. And we've seen a couple of um, a couple of uh, commercial examples here, like a flexible solar cells and and a, and a, and, a, and a flexible uh, display similar to like a Kindle. And I'm interested in this kind of like large scale electronics because I feel like these types of like unconventional soft electronics can become like this backbone of, of metaverse, which maybe we can call it metaware. Um, so with this, with this electronics, we can basically make our environments, our body more immersive and connect, that, connect this you know, physical data, physical, a uh, physical, um, change uh, in, in our body and the environments to, to the digital environment. Um, breakthrough in functional polymer and circuit fabrication also sparked various e-textile technologies with application ranging from implantables and, and, and space fabrics. Because if you textiles actually everywhere, not only on our clothes, it's the, it's the you know, uh, it's that fabric on the internet station uh, skin uh, is the sittings, it's the flooring, it's everywhere. And, and so that's why I'm really interested in, in the fabric because it's so ubiquitous that it's an amazing uh, substrate to embed electronics in. Um, the most common approach in integrating electronics uh, currently is with textile art practices, such as fusing, em fusing embroidery, sewing, weaving, knitting either by hand or, or hand operated machines. But like, what well, I feel like this boutique, this boutique hand manual hand made approach, you know, even though they have certain values in some aspects for prototyping, you know, they restrain us and they restrain designers from rapid prototyping, large scale manufacturing and, and trying to make electronics ubiquitous in our uh, daily life to realize this Mark Weiser's vision. Um, and, and, and a lot of people are trying to miniaturize you know, electronics starting from the primitive, uh, which is a fiber. So as you can see, uh, multimodal flexible fibers can now be designed, you know, to, to have channels, to have, con you know, to have, to, to have conductivity, uh, to be able to uh, um, transfer lights and, and, and things like that for stimulations, for implantables. Um, it can be this mesh, a conductive mesh that can wrap on your brain. 
spread around for in brain activity monitoring, or even it can be like as a stent, a medical stent or catheter in our body. Uh, I think at MIT here, working on electronics textiles for implantables. Um, in a broader um, implementations, you know, project to have a jacket for gel sensing. We have we have seen people embedding electronics on fabrics, uh, sensors on fabrics to to detect, you know, our body movements. Of course, when you think about clothing, because it's close to our body, it's a great um, uh, a way to measure our physiological um, uh, data, such as heart rate, respiration, etc., and and also, you know, uh, for like uh, shoe, detect walking and activities and things like that. Uh, so that this is all like a lot of people are kind of like focusing on this world of electronics. Um, also, like because fabric is ubiquitous, it's actually um, uh, uh, our our interior our, and in our in our home as interior upholstery. Uh, uh, several researchers have also like you know, integrated uh, textile sensors in seatings, in in floorings, in mats, in 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 uh, uh, furniture for for. To, to, to make this kind of like a sensing and display to make our environment more interactive. Um, more rarely, uh, if you think about fabrics, actually also um, this geotextile that is underground or also it can be this building skin. So I can see a lot of applications um, that I, I feel overlooked in trying to embed electronics on this kind, kind of large structures for for example, uh, one of the most uh, used uh, geotextiles, they actually embed piezoelectrics in, um, on, inside like roads, basically piezoelectric fibers to count cars. So, so it's a fiber that as you compress it, it, uh, it uh, generates uh, electricity. Um, so they can sense car and count you know, traffic that way. Um, but you can of course make it larger scales. Um, uh, in, in, in the second um, example, it can be as a smart textile sun shading. So as the room becomes, uh, as the building room um, become hotter, the temperature increases, uh, the flaps of the textiles can open so that it becomes these responsive surfaces. Another application we've been looking into in responsive environments uh, led by uh, my colleague Juliana is trying to embed uh, 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 piezoelectric fibers into uh, beta cloth, which is uh, aerospace grade textiles to detect micrometeorite impacts so that you can know where they're coming from and what might happen way back then. So it's an, an amazing research that she managed to actually send the first electronic textiles to space recently and tested uh, her sensors there. Um, we've also had this uh, idea of embedding electronics on spacesuit because there's a lot of problem concern and a lot of human up computer interaction of prospects that we can do for astronauts because you know they're wearing these bulky uh, suits that we develop this develop this um, electronic textiles that can transfer um, the outer environment um, for augmenting um, their sensory. Um, so because you know the suit is bulky, sometimes they cannot really feel what's out there, or they can't even really feel or interact with their um, uh, um, astronaut colleagues. So by sensing, uh, embedding sensor on the outer layer, we can really transfer that haptics towards their inner skin. Um, um, so yeah, as you can see, textiles are everywhere uh, and its manufacturing process is actually very traditional. But there's also this deep link between process used in textiles and that in some cases present era like the way we make electrical wires for example is the way they 
uh, draw fibers or, or, or the way we make optical fibers are also similar to the way uh, people back then um, draw or, or produce fibers or the way we make printed circuit boards. It's inspired by the way we um, uh, pattern screen print textiles um, using you know, sunlight, UV uh, actuation. Or the way we um, uh, do some kind of like fab fabric embellishments is also, it's, uh, also inspired some electronic textiles fabrications. So I can see that because there is this overlap between electronic, the way we manufacture electronics, the way man we manufacture textiles, and in the future, they cross pollinate. You know, textiles and electronic factories, they become one. So then it will really bring us one step closer to this vision of ubiquitous uh, computational textiles. Um, so so, so that, this is my research, which combine materials, which combine how we design functional fibers, how we use manufacturing techniques of textiles, and how we design system to be able to uh, read this sensory data out of this um, fiber or textile artifacts. And if we look into electronic textiles, we can actually um, uh, cut it in, 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 in hierarchically from a, the primitive level, which is the fiber. Uh, so, so in hierarchy, the, functional, the, the functionalization of textiles can take place at every dimension, from fiber to yarn to, 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 to fabric to uh, the end product. Uh, and if you want the electronics to be embedded very seamless, you want to work from the most primitive level, which is the fiber. So my colleague here, like in the Yolfing group, they're trying to uh, embed electronics and fibers, uh, develop or uh, uh, deposit uh, sensor mat uh, sensing materials on fibers. Um, using uh, non microfabrications or thermal drawing. And we can also leverage the way we make yarns, which is a formation of fibers. And, and, and that's really interesting. Like some, some, some work are this like piezo fiber that is braided. So it has this two, um, it's a multi-layer structures uh, consisting of like a, a bottom and an outer inner electrodes and in between there is this piezoelectric material that can sense a stress and strain. Uh, some people use braiding to insulate uh, conductive fibers or um, Alex Olwell for example used like conductive fibers and optical fibers to make this uh, 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 that can sense pressure, stretch, and, and light up based on and a lot of things you can uh, do by leveraging this industrial manufacturing approach, designing new types of sensors, designing your own uh, electronic yarn. Um, so then it's actually you use uh, digital uh, manufacturing approach as it, as such as digital main. So weaving are uh, like uh, a cross section, like uh, vertical kind of fuse of fibers. Um, so so it's accent. To these structures, while knitted consists of like continuous knitting, continuous yarn that makes loops, um, and are constructed to interlocks. And and one of the attractive qualities of knitted textiles, the deformable properties, uh, that allows us to make uh, fabrics and breathable fabrics. And with with this type of knitting, you can also make a complex tubular three D structures. Um, and 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 yeah, and I've been looking into knitting conductive or assistive threads. Uh, and uh, there are many ways you can functional, you functionalize fabrics. Uh, as you can see in this graph, you can coat uh, the fabric. You can um, use composite fiber that is knitted. So, so the fiber itself is the sensors. 
or you can leverage the geometric design because knitted textiles have these unique properties. As you play with them, as you stretch them or press them, there is this interesting mechanism uh, in their mechanical structures that also correlate to electrical property if you code it, code it with conductive materials. So you can make sensors based a leverage by like by leveraging this change in loop um, structures. Um, I'm gonna uh, go through this is one of my research where looking closer into the nature of knitted fabrics to make sensors and conductive transmission. But uh, one of our research and why I'm interested in in a digital fabrication and digital knitting is that we. Uh, um, a few years ago, uh, I have this project called Fabric Keyboard, which is basically an expressive uh, musical instrument uh, that allows you to detect touch, proximity, pressure, and stretch. And back then, I could only do one octave, which is 12 keys, because like it's such a multimodal uh, uh, fabric interface that it like that manually developing it, I. I, I'm limited by uh, this complexity of you know, sewing it myself and stitching it myself. But then after I learned digital fabrications and working on smart textiles um, uh, with uh, starting from fiber level, I can make my own textile structures now and then really like and really like rapidly develop develop my prototypes. So back then, I can only do one octave. Now it went. To like two two updates, two upgrade versions. Now I I could do five octaves in in an in a in a matter of few hours instead of a, a, a week stitching it myself. So 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 I have I have that leverage and 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 um, and I really this this manufacturing allowed me to uh, prototype rapidly and design my own patterns, colors, and, and, and as a designer, it gives me a lot of, uh, capabilities. Um, so, so the keyboard basically leverage capacitive sensing techniques. So it can measure how close you are to the keys inspired by Termin. You can map it to sound so that you can have this ambience before you even play it. Um, um, also, what's interesting, I, I have this version where um, it kind of like uh, I kind of like use this electric field sensing where my hand, my right hand is trying to like also inspired by term in my right hand can go to a source, in this case, an AC hum or like a, a, a plug, which has a lot of the 60 hertz noise. And as my left hand touching the keys and my right hand like waving towards this transmitter, I can do both continuous and discrete controls of a keyboard. Um, so, so as you can see here, my left hand can play the keys while my right hand going to another transmitter to modulate uh, you know, frequency or volume or whatever. And in every key, there is also pressure sensor. So it really like um, try to uh, mimic a piano when you, you know, press it harder, the sound can be louder. Um, and when you press lighter, it's lower piano forte. Uh, and I also embed stretch sensors in between the keys so you can really massage the fabric and becomes really this expressive deformable musical interface. And 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 yeah, the last version, it as, as you can see before it undergone it it and it it's undergone very like like multiple uh, um, iterations and the last one I leveraged this digital machine knitting and and I like this um, uh, Neil Stephenson's uh, uh, write up in the diamond age so like 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 he wished back then and there is this like matter compiler uh, with which can make whatever um, um, whatever he wishes. And, and now it's really here. So like with this 3D knitting, kind of piggybacking 3D printing. Um, um, so this is uh, the interface of a knitting machine. So, you, so, 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 so basically how it works is that you have yarn carriers and, and you have these sliders that goes back and forth, right and left. And, and you can feed the knitting machine with different yarns and based on your color block programming, you really uh, 
program the loop in which yarn goes into the loop. So you can really combine functional yarn with common yarn, even like um, uh, twist them together. And, and this is the, the, the layer of the knitted keyboard. So it has the pressure sensing, touch sensing, proximity layers. Um, and I'll show you a demo of how it works. So I collaborated with this uh, keyboardist and composer uh, at MIT in Berkeley. And he, it's, 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 it's a, it was a great collaboration. And, and I was really glad he even composed the music that specifically kind of like uh, he, he composed some music um, especially for this uh, fabric deformable instrument. So that's proximity here, as you can uh, hear. fun so like uh, and after that uh afternoon knowing how to knit like realizing how uh, rapid it is how powerful it is i i know i'm i'm i i want to make something bigger more large large crayon and i ha i have this idea of creating like a carpet a flooring that you know can sense your body postures your body location your body gestures and i end up collaborating with a dancer uh, from Julia at Lonnie Landon. And as a dancer, usually you, know, you have this, um, this uh, 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 problem of you don't have an agency over the music, you create choreography based on the music and we want to reverse that. So, 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 so we created this uh, carpet uh, using these knitting machines. And, and in this project, I, I, I'm, I was really, I come from Indonesia, which has a very like strong textile cultures. So I was motivated by the craftsmanship of cultural textiles and how they really connect to traditional performance arts. And, and, and in this project, I'm trying to bring this artistic and humanistic approach into technological textile design uh, and really try to combine, you know, like sensing technologies, electronic fibers with contemporary dance and music into a united uh, object and performance. So, so if you can see here, you can, uh, the, the patterns of this carpet uh, basically, it, uh, it represents 1,800 uh, pressure sensing pixels, and they're inspired by the galactic space. So it's like the starry patterns, and and this carpet basically is a pressure imaging carpet. So as you stand on it, it images the pressure um, you're inducing on the surface. And you know, as you move your body, you also change the balance. You also change. You also like change the pressure towards your feet. Um, and with that, you can recognize your posture. So that's another applications with, with, uh, which we are like researching and, 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 and working on right now. But um, yeah, we leverage this mini machine. We, it's a programmable uh, carpet. Uh, we, it's, it became a canvas for sound artists and dancers to really um, design their own musical mapping. Um, we have two different performance, uh, a day performance and, and, and a night performance. Uh, I also work with my colleague, a sound artist, and he used uh, Fisi Furak, which is this digital synthesizer. So he basically, I give him this 1,800 continuous pressure sensing data, and he feed into this um, digital module synthesizers to convert uh, this uh, sensor data into MIDI streams uh, that drives the discrete notes, effects, immersive sounds create soundscapes through subtractive additive and granular synthesizers. Um, and this is kind of like a setup. So as you know, the, 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 the dancers dancing, she's in real time, um, driving the sonic environment. And we were also, we also have this professional videographer uh, taking a video of it. And this is, uh, um, uh, um, um, one of the performance.
this idea of like an immersive experience that's kind of like enhancing the physical environment rather than transporting us to completely to a to a digital world. Um, um, so I believe in the in in, in this um, 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 future verse that enhances our experience rather than fully transporting us, which I, which I think is more like um, human. Uh, this is a this is a darker uh, patch, uh, night mode. So the sound artist and and I try to like uh, sync the vibe and the sound mapping. And actually, the carpet is also knitted with a glow in the dark, you know, so you can see it glowing at night. And, and and they're like it in some patches is the like we're trying to combine like discrete and continuous uh sorry direct and indirect mapping so 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 the audience would like really like question whether you know the the sound is driven by the dancer or, or vice versa but there are some patches that have like you know direct very direct sound mapping like this one And, and and in that patch, the dancer really had fun because she felt like she's a conductor, and that you know she forgot actually that uh, she forgot about like her movements and just you know trying to have fun with it. Whereas for whereas in this in this patch, I uh, this is also one of my favorite. It's more like kind of opera, uh, opera and and expressive um, mapping. So 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 yeah. If if you're interested, there are, there are, there are videos online in our uh, group page and media lab page. Um, um, but yeah, my research is about you know proposing this ubiquitous computing framework that creates synergy between material design tools and 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 and, and systems. Um, uh, my 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 project is also really looking like bio inspired by the human uh, skin. Uh, because you know our skin is a remarkable example of a large coverage and fine grain sensing systems because it has multiple sensing modalities you know we can sense temperature pain vibration pressure shear etc and 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 the fact that our uh, skin the somatosensory networks that we have on our skin um, process data through these complex interactions at many levels so from the skin it goes to the uh from the from the sensory receptors at the skin it goes to spinal cords and then into the brain so it has this communication channels and and i'm also working with a lot of you know soft electronics and and and, and inspired by you know the human body uh i have this project where i want to embed i i, I want to embed distributed sensors towards clothing you know because it, if you look at wearables and 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 uh and wearables and uh body sensors sometimes it's only specific location and it's only specific modality like for example smart watch smart watch right? it's only on your wrist and it only measures a couple of um uh, uh, sensing modalities, a temperature, uh, you know, a PPG, um, uh, blood flow, and things like that. But but I'm interested in like clothing because it's such a great substrate. It covers most of the body. Why don't you know? If we embed these sensors everywhere, we can do some kind of like image 
um, of your body. So in, in this case, I embed axometer, um, IMU and temperature sensors all across the body and, and leverage the knitting machine. And, and one problem with uh, smart textiles and smart clothing or art clothing in general, they don't really, they're not really in contact with the skin, right? Because they're loose. So in here, we, we really um, uh, measure our body, scan our body in 3D and really try to design a smart shirt that will uh, fit, that's form-fitted uh, and comfortable so that you have a great sensor to skin contact because that's important in order to have accurate, uh, an accurate reading. And as you can see, the sensors are all across the body, uh, the fabric, uh, the, the, the circuit is stretchable. So you can, we did a lot of repeatability testings. Um, um, so it will withstand daily wear. Um, and we use industrial manufacturing approach uh, of flexible printed circuit boards. So we can really make a lot and rapidly fabricate this. Um, and, and the main controller, the battery, they're pluggable because of course these this components are not washable. So we designed this pluggable mechanism. So, so when you wanna wash the fabric, you can unplug the main modules, um, but wash the sensors. Um, so in here, we also uh, de develop uh, uh, an, an encapsulation methods to enable the sensors to be washable. Um, yeah, this one is just a proof of how uh, stretchable it is and repeatable it is. And this is kind of a cross-validation data of our sensors with um, uh, commercial sensors. As you can see, it can detect, you know, temperature, you, you get this temperature heat map of all, all around the body. And what's interesting here is like I had this idea to um, prove its washability based uh, like by actually encapsulating the you know battery and main network module and just throw the fabric into the washing machine and try to prove it by uh, real time communicating the data while it's being washed. So if you can see the right below graph, um, it's actually the temperature data of the fabric while it's being washed and also the acceleration data of the fabric while it's being washed. So I even got to understand how machine washing machine works. Um, 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 based on, you know, how it rotates and the temperature throughout the time. Uh, this is, uh, um, I'll, I'll fast forward, it's very long. So, so, so this is it, it's being washed and it's getting the data as uh, the fabric the fabric is inside the washing machine. It's like the top one is temperature, the bottom one is saturation. And uh, and this is um, as a as a user is wearing it, we can get a real time data of uh, heart rate, respiration, and, and temperature. And as as and as you run, uh, in the first few minutes, your body become hotter because your body is outputting energies. And 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 after a while, you sweat and your temperature lowers down. You cool down. And of course, your temperature, uh, sorry, your heart rate and, and your respiration in the end of the running uh, get higher. Um, awesome. So, so, so that's um, kind of like um, uh, distributed electronic textiles on fabrics for earth applications. And here at the Media Lab, we're, we have special initiative and we're lo also looking forward to future and space travel. So I also have project on Develop, developing spacesuits um, 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 in terms of also like uh, space health. So when you're in, in microgravity, you, you, you have a lot of uh, influence on your, on your body because you're not accustomed to that, to, to being weightless. So, so because you're being weightless, your blood doesn't flow uh, towards the periphery of your body. It centers around your, the, the heart. And, and, and that really affects your cardiovascular, you know, your cardiovascular becomes weaker. Um, you have muscle atrophy uh, because you don't have weight. You don't work out as much. You get bone loss and that also uh, trickle down to other effects such as vision loss, space sickness, head congestion, puffy face, and et cetera. Uh, and yeah, this is a clearer figure. So in earth gravity, um, your blood can go towards the leg, but in zero gravity, 
um, it doesn't go towards your toe. And that's very problematic. And, 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 and this is also actually a problem if you're a jet uh, pilot, because the, 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 the plane is so fast, uh, you're, you're under hypergravity that your blood uh, gets to a lower body and, and uh, too much that you somehow could really become uh, um, what, what it's called uh, blackout. Uh, lose consciousness because you don't have blood uh, flowing around your brain and 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 that's why they created this g suit that compresses your body or a skin suit in outer space like an underwear that kind of like also compresses your body passively um, in terms of health sensing in 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 is and the traditional space station it's also very like uh, complex so in the in the left one, in it's it's that's how they distribute their fluid and blood flow. They have this chibi suit, which kind of like massage you towards the bottom, uh, try to get that blood to your toe, or if you want to you know measure your heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, you need to like wear all of these wires. It's very complicated, and it's 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 just a mess. It's 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 a, it's um, it wastes a lot of time of the astronauts instead they instead of actually working on their mission so 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 in order to really help these astronauts um to measure their physiological um um parameters uh more comfortably and also try to solve this um cardiovascular de deconditioning uh, we developing this uh, compression, active compression suits by embedding vessels, especially towards the body. Um, um, and and, and these this compressions, they're dynamically controlled based on your blood pressure. So we send your physiological service and intervene uh, based on that. Um, and, and it's called peristaltic suit because it kind of like massage you from the top to bottom. Um, um, and, and, and it basically it has, a, it has a bunch of compression sensors and, uh, air bladders around the suit, um, and connected to the visual physiological sensors to measure your heart rate, your blood flow, your, uh, that, and, and from this heart rate and blood flow, you can get blood pressure. And from that blood pressure, the system tries to, uh, um, uh, find the right compression values because at the at the end we don't want to really like choke you or like compress you that much because it 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 could be also also un, uh, uncomfortable and 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 I managed to actually test that suit in a zero gravity so here I'm doing some kind of acrobatic movements to really uh, change my blood flow around my body if you can see on the left side there are this. Uh, this uh, air pipes that's actually going towards the air bladders throughout my body. It was such a fun experiment. Um, um, so this uh, zero gravity flights, it's called uh, uh, parabolic flights. Uh, it gives us 20, 20 microgravity exposure in 20 seconds. So it's very quick. Um, um, and and in and in and the com like in, in here, uh, you you can see a pocket there. That's the main tool that sends all my compression and physiological data to the computer. And now we're trying to actually um, analyze this data because we want to understand uh, what happened to our body when we're under microgravity and what are the what are the influence of this compression, whether they work in trying to redistribute blood flow or not. Um, and I want to I want to end I want the end presentation. I want the end I want to end the presentation by um, also um, introducing our current project where we try to embed electronics um, everywhere in the environments, not only you know, coding, but also like math, shoes, because um, from everybody. And, and uh, work so that you know we have all of the sensor data of our body environments and really leverage it and 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 use it to enhance our interaction with each other aside with with you know the carpet 
uh, or to understand uh, us better, right? Uh, from from studying our physiology, and and I'm also interested in like now you have all of this rich sensor rich textiles which give you this large data sets of sensor data. How would we how would we how how to visualize them in 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 AR or VR, for example? Um, um, how can we really leverage this data? Uh, and how can we visualize them so that so that's kind of like my my next research um so yeah I, I guess i will end it there thank you very much and and yeah if, if if i hope i don't know whether there there's a question and answer sessions but i would love to uh discuss um or or answer some questions if, if you guys have any thank you so much uh, thank you so much, Amani. It was yeah, it was definitely very insightful. Uh, you know, especially when you, um, you know, share about the the different possibility and the uh, intricacy of the technology in, in soft uh, fabrics. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was very very uh, actually very uh, uh, inspired by the way that you look into things like uh, you know Im immersive environments, uh, but yet. You know, enhancing our experience, but yet not, you know, transporting ourselves totally into the digital environment as well, right? Um, and and of course, you know, your um, the 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 suits in many different environments, right? Um, from sports, you know, to to zero G environments and stuff like that. So thank you so much for for your presentation, and we definitely have some time for question. Um, but maybe I will start off by asking you. Um, a question is that, you know, what are some of the, uh, how, what are some of the likely applications, you know, for, uh, for, for other industries and for other fragments of society? Um, and, and that's one. And second one is actually, you know, what are the hurdles for adoption? Because I think what, I think what everything you are proposing, you know, to, to the wearable fabric is that in some sense, you're actually creating some um, a possibility of an omnipresence of technology. That means you wear it without even noticing it that, you know, there's, there's all this um, uh, sort of high-tech, right, review. So what are the sort of likely concerns or hurdles that, uh, that you think there will be? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that's also why I'm interested in the intersection of research and manufacturing, because you know, in 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 universities and in a, in in our research, we may prioritize, but then but then at the end we have these challenges on how to actually like you know large scale fabricate them and and put them in hands of users. Um, so I I guess that's also what what I'm trying to um, uh, uh, show in in my research that by working with this in industrial machines and in industrial and factories um, you can make large-scale prototypes of your um, uh, projects research projects you can make a large quantities of them and you can actually customize them because one thing about wearables is that you know every person is different right um we have we come we all come in a different size just just like fashion so like I think by really like thinking about the way if because I'm doing I'm trying to functionalize clothing the way we make clothes, um, I got really I get I get a lot of insights on how to you know make make them and try to like personalize them to specific users. Um, and what what was your the what was the first questions uh, I I. Can you repeat it? So, um, actually, my first question is, you know, uh, uh, have you actually thought of, um, you know, uh, some of the other applications, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, I actually see a lot of potential in healthcare, right? Yeah. Um, in, in health monitoring, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you think, I mean, at the end, it's, I don't. Know, I just feel like like the other the application is based on what you imagine it is. Um, there are definitely like applications that are more um, uh, in, impactful or like time uh, like 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 um, that are like very neat, like 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 very important right now. Like I think healthcare is one. The fact that you know clothes are like 
very close to the skin, very close to us. It's such a great real estate to embed health sensing, right? Especially during the pandemic, right? So, so I, I believe we're moving to this uh, era of personalized telemedicine where uh, at the moment or in the past, you know, you go to the hospital when you feel like you're sick. Um, um, and, 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 you know, you have, and then you found out that you're actually sick and you have surgeries, but with this kind of wearable technology, um, you can really like, uh, realize this health telehealth care where you don't really need to go to the hospital, the, the doctor, you can really like measure your own visual sensing, um, um, know your, um, health no 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 whether you're sick or not and only go to the hospital when you really need it you know and and uh, because that will really save a lot of like of course money effort and 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 time and and and, and time is very crucial if you think about you know life and death so 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 yeah the most i guess that's very i would say um um uh, um, very immediate applications. It's healthcare. The future definitely metaverse. You know, because I mean, if you think about hundred years later, like I would really, I would really think that every fab we we won't have just a normal fabrics. Every fabric that we wear will have electronics embedded in it, and will be connected to this nervous systems that I say electronic textile Gaia, which connected to your the, the digital world that we all share, and that would be very interesting. Uh, but that will take time because there are, of, of course, hard hurdles in trying to mass manufacture it, um, um, making it cheaper, making making uh, uh, and, and 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 trying to connect with 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 this with, with this all. I think you're muted. Yeah. So thanks so much, uh, I, So I'm just wondering, are there any questions from the floor? Yeah. Galina? Yeah. Yes, I just would like to thank Hermandi for the super inspiring talk. And then I was going to ask him if he can imagine the future that we use our skin to be embedded with electronics instead of our clothing. Do you think that will happen here Monday? So uh, that, I think that's an, I think that's a great that's I think that's a great vision. I mean I think I mean it's there is a lot of complexity and challenges in terms in terms of it, right? I mean the electronics as we know it at the moment it's 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 not biocompatible. Some are biocompatible, but in order to realize that, there there needs to be a lot of material science innovations and 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 biocompatibility testing. There are a lot of people are thinking about it. Um, um, I I also I also like you know some ideas of like you know making skin grafts with embedded electronics within rather than. I think at the moment in ACI communities, it's more like making fake skins and putting electronics in it and then just laminate it on top of your skin. But I think that's I think that's a great that's I think that's it's a great way to to really embed or integrate you know human and, and machines because it will be really be a part of you. You know, whereas like clothing, it's something that is it's 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 a second skin rather than it's your own skin. Um, uh, yeah, um, I think uh, like a, a f my like one of postdoc Katia Vega in in our in our group, you know, she 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 tried to make this biosensors that too. But um, I came from like a, a semiconductor background. And I feel like you know electronics and computing they they could do much more. So if somehow someone managed to really. And definitely RFIDs. People have done RFIDs a lot, you know, implant RFIDs. But if there will be a time where this electronics, this microcontrollers can be embedded in our skin, I think that that will be amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, um, are there any other questions? 
you know, you know, I, I, Amani, I really love the uh, one of the sentence that you said. You know, it was also very inspiring that you said that the 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 future is metaverse, and actually you view the um you know future where all fabrics will be smart, right? It will yeah. be embedded uh, with uh, electronics and 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 all that, right? So I'm I'm just uh, wondering, do you have anything else to add to that sentence? Because I think you know to that to that vision actually, you know, uh, you know for 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 uh, for instance, you know, how do you see that it will be? Uh, it, it gets adopted mainstream. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I think I have one slide, and I I I I I very briefly uh, covered that. But like, you know, at first, at first, when I I mean, I came from a, a, a electrical engineering background, and I and I got to I got into textiles actually from even early from when I was a kid because my grandma she does a lot of weaving, and you know, I thought I thought like I will never do textiles because it was. I don't know. It was repetitive and pretty boring, and I'm, you know, I'm into tech more, and it's funny now. I'm actually doing textiles. I could actually also, you know, work with her. Uh, but the more I, the more I research about textile manufacturing, I, the more I see that textile manufacturing and electronic semiconductor manufacturings, they share similar processes. So, so, and if you want to adopt something, it should start from, you know, manufacturing from, from production so i could see them merging so i could see like future factories it's not like at the moment textile factories and semiconductor factories they're separated they don't touch each other they don't even they don't talk to each other you know but in the futures i could see them it become one just because they share the same principles actually we but we just don't really know it or or, or see it that way so, so I think that's the first step in order for this adoption or trying to embed electronics densely and, and, ubiqu uh, and, and ubiquitously. Uh, it should start from um, that very like manufacturing production process. Um, so that's, that's how I, I also recently learned by you know, working with these factories. Um, um, there should also be a very like uh, more intimate relationship between research and manufacturing uh, and at the media lab we we are lucky to to have been able to you know have chance to really work in the factory floors and try to hack their manufacturing approaches because manufacturing factories you know they they're they're accustomed to just mass manufacture one thing and just and just like and just like um make one thing well but but they're not like us where we prototype things, right? Yeah. Uh, but by 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 and and by inviting to collaborate with us and by influencing them to like you know try new types of fibers, try new types of um, um, uh, technology into their fabrication process, um, um, then and in the end they and we could actually make our research or in my case my electronic textiles research more large scale and dense uh, by by working side by side with the with the manufacturers i think that's also important um, that relationship between research between uh, industry and, and and universities with factory floors for example and i and i realized that they actually really like working with students you know because they got bored on just like doing one thing and producing one thing all over all over again that i came there and i I, you know, ask them stupid questions. I broke their machines. They actually like it because it's something that is new and, and they're curious about it. So, so, so I think that's what I learned by working with in, in this factory floors and, and, and knowing how things get made. Um, Thank you so much, Amani. Yeah, uh, there's actually a very specific question on uh, what kind or what type of knitting machine was used to make the uh, uh, keyboard, yeah. Yeah, so it is a uh, it is a flatbed knitting machine. It's two layer knitting machine, top like top and back. So it's flatbed. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there's there's there is a there's also whole garment, um, but that one is even more sophisticated. But I'm just using flatbed because I feel like flatbed is more, uh, it's 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 more hack. It's it's easier to to hack and 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 prototype with. Yeah.
Okay. So um, thank you so much once again, Armani, um, uh, for your insightful sharing. Um, you know, um, I, the, the, and, and, and you're sharing about your visions of garments and the, the, the possibility of soft fabrics and electronics, right? So it's really truly inspiring. But I think coming uh, to the end, I, I also would like to highlight, um, you know, some of the uh, other talks, the upcoming talks that we're going to have over the next uh, um, two weeks uh, or over the month. Right, we have uh, Robbie, who is from Michigan State University. We've been going into a little bit more into metaverse and the use of avatars. And then uh, we have Christine uh, Nadimir from um, the Netherlands, right? Sensory, who will be talking a little bit more of the uh, smart fabrics and emotions, you know, the connection. And at the same time, I also would like to share something about these uh, things that we just launched the NTU Global Digital Art Prize. So we are in our second edition right now. And of course, you know, we, we are more or less very much happy to invite everybody to submit. It is a, it's an international uh, um, uh, competition, I would say. But more importantly, we would like to recognize this kind of intersections that Armani has just shared, uh, you know, among engineering, research, arts, right? So um, this is our second time running this, right? The first time was uh, uh, three years ago in 2019, right? And um, uh, uh, I, I will share the details. You can actually find more details from which I will enter it into the chat, okay, of this contest. But shortlisted entries were, were basically inviting them to showcase in Singapore with uh, expenses paid, you know, travel, accommodation, uh, installation costs, et cetera, right? So um, yeah, so this is something that I would like to share and invite all of you to submit and participate. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Galina, are there anything you would like to say to close the session? I would like to thank everyone for participating. And definitely, Armandi, thank you so much for the insightful and very inspiring talk. We will definitely continue, as Hidran says, on the 19th. And then I hope with your Monday we can collaborate and meeting and doing some cool projects yeah. here at Arizona State University. Thank you, That's, Hidran. That would be awesome. The session was amazing. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. So, uh, we, uh, this session is recorded, so we'll be disseminating the recordings um, uh, on, on our web page. So stay tuned. And thank you so much, Amani. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.